namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambodassa good evening everyone <clears throat> Okay, today we will discuss about <coughs> sexual misconduct. Uh, so this is a under uh, five precepts, right? The third precept. Okay. Kamesu um, mechachara. So when you take five precepts, you always recite, right? So in the Bali Canon, uh, it is mentioned in this way. So the Buddha said that uh, he, engage, he engages in sexual misconduct. And he has sexual relationship, sexual relations with the women who are protected by their mother, their father, their mother and father, their brother, their sister, or relatives. So here, up to here, is very quite clear, right? Quite clear. So I say, actually, it refers to man. Obviously, right? So that means if you engage sexual relation with the women who are protected by their mother or their father or their parents or their brother, sister or relatives. When you look at this, uh, these lines, uh, there's no age limit, right? There's no age limit. According to modern law, if someone is 80 years old, it's considered as a adept, right? <clears throat> he has a free choice to get married. But here, even though a woman is um, a woman any age, right? Uh, he considers someone is protected. It can be their mother, even though the woman is about maybe 40, or even 40 years old then you cannot engage in such a relationship if actually she will be protected one way or another, right? So when you look at the Pali, quite clear that. So you can see here who, who are protected by their Dhamma brethren. So Dhamma brethren me uh, as the Buddhist nuns, or Christian nuns like that, right? So they are protected by their uh, Dhamma brethren. In other words, it is a co-relationist, uh, co co-relationist. So when you look at here, every woman is protected by someone, you know? Without their permission, if you engage in sexual relationship, so that means it is a uh, sexual misconduct for men, you know, men, very strict. Uh, who have a husband, needless to say, right? So if she got married, you are not allowed to have a sexual relationship. Another one is whose violation entails a penalty. So someone laid down a rules and regulation. If you have a sexual relationship with a certain lady or woman, uh, you'll be punished, you'll be punished. So that means you cannot engage sexual relationship with such women. 
And the last one, even with the one already engaged. Some have already engaged. So actually we cannot say as a wife, right? Just engagement, just engagement. So as a man, you are not, you are not allowed to have a sexual relations with such a lady, engaged lady, engaged women. When you study you know, the Pali Canon, it seemed to me that you are not allowed, as a man, man is not allowed to have a sexual relation with any gay, any gay, you know? But you need to have a permission, permission. If we, uh, how do they take it literally? If we take it literally. If we follow uh, current rules and regulation, right? Current law. So you can have a sexual relation with the gay, you know, a deaf gay, right? Over 18, over 18. <clears throat> so here is a question, you know. It talk about only for men, you know. It does not talk about poor women. So therefore, the commentary came in, you know. So therefore, the commentaries are helpful to learn, you know, Buddhist point of view. Maybe uh, the closer point of view or the uh, Buddhist teaching, you know, at least, at least. So, when you look at this uh, Pali, Pali Canon, what the Buddha taught, so you cannot, as a man, you cannot get, you cannot have a sexual relation with the married women. Number one. Then you cannot have a sexual relation with the engaged, or someone who is already engaged. And also, the women who are protected by guardians, guardians. It can be their mother, father, sister, brother, etc. Right, etc. So you need to control, you know, your body. So then only you'll be able to. You are observing precept, observing precept. <clears throat> so later I will explain. Uh, <clears throat> based on commentary, uh, commentary explanations. Okay, so um, as usual, uh, we'll quote one soda. Uh, the Buddha said, because one possessing three quality is deposited in hell as if brought there. Number one, one engages in sexual misconduct, one safe. You do, your, you do sexual, relation, sexual misconduct. Number two, you encourage other to do so. Then number three, approve for engaging in sexual misconduct. So these are three quality. Number one, you don't have to do that. Number two, you don't have to encourage other to do so. Maybe not doing business that engage sexual misconduct. And number three, approve for engaging sexual misconduct. You Promoting, or maybe number two is promoting. Number three is you agree to do that. So the expositor is the commentary or the first epidemic text. The first epidemic text. It explained that kamisu mechachara literally means. A wrong practice, a wrong conduct in sexual, ple in sensual pleasures. A wrong conduct in sensual pleasures. Kamisu mechachara. So you are practicing uh, in a wrong way in sensual pleasures. I think this definition is very important because later we have to learn Drinking alcohol also a kind of kamisu mechachara. 
because if you are drinking alcohol, you are using sensual pleasure in a wrong way, in a wrong way. So based on this uh, uh, definition, Kamesu Mechachara. <clears throat> it is a violation, according to this, uh, this uh, precept, it is a violation to commit sexual misconduct. So it is a violation of motivation, according to Buddhism. Violation or chitana is important. It is volition. Uh, there are four factors to complete Kamesu Mecha Chara. Number one, number one, must be the passing, the one you engage, must be the passing protect, protected by the guardians, the guardians. Number two, having a volition to commit such a misconduct. So here, volition is very important. Sometimes you don't have any volition, uh, then you, you are forced to do that. It might not be uh, Kamisu Mechachara. Number three, making an effect. Number four, gratifying in sensual uh, sexual intercourse, gratifying, you enjoy it, you enjoy it. So here, when you look at here, the person must be protected by a guardian. You must have a volition or motivation to commit sexual misconduct. And you make an effort. You have to make it. And you enjoy it. So that is the four factors of sensual, uh, sexual misconduct such a misconduct. Okay, so um, commit effect of such a misconduct, <clears throat> the degree of karmic consequences will be different according to the quality of the forbidden passings. So according to commentaries, uh, as a man, 20, women are forbidden. So if you commit uh, such a misconduct to one of them, so according to their quality, or the, according to their mor morality, according to their wisdom, then uh, the degree of karmic consequences will be different. If the women is of high morality and high wisdom, the consequences will be higher, you know, bigger, like that, according to degree of karmic consequences, according to the quality of the forbidden passings, forbidden passing. Okay, so we have a 20 women and wife. In other words, 20 type of women, you know, 20 type of women that you, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to engage in such a miscontact. Parachika Pali, Vinaya Pitika, mentions 10 type of women. In Pali, a tier, 10 type of women. Simply, we can call it unmarried women. So these 10 type are not married. And ten type of wife, Briyami, married women. Ten type of married women. So Parajika Bali mentioned ten type of married women and ten type of married women. The commentaries explain the adult sexual misconduct based on these 10 type of women. Women, sorry, women. Right? Women. So we, when you just look at Pali Canon, it referred to for men, right? It didn't mention about women, women. So therefore, 
the commentary came in. So the commentaries explain the ad hoc sexual misconduct based on Parajika Pali from Winia Pitaka. So in that Parajika Pali, we have a 10 type of unmarried women and 10 type of uh, married women, altogether 20. In other words, we can call it 20 type of women, right? If a man has sexual intercourse with any of them, whether they are married or unmarried, so he transgress sexual misconduct. He engages in Kamesu Mecha Char. Kamesu Mecha Char. So later we have to learn 20 type of women, women. If as a man, engage sexual relations with any of them, he break the precept, break the precept. So for that, we need to learn 20 type of women. First of all, so we will talk about 10 type of unmarried women. 10 type of unmarried women. So the women are protected by the mother. So she has only mother. So she, the mother protected her daughter. If a man have a sexual relationship with such woman, he break uh, this precept, this precept. Then the mother die, or oh, she has only father. So the father is a guardian, a guardian. Number three, the women protected by both mother and father. Both mother and father. And number four, the women, women protected by the brother. Number five, the women protected by the sister. Number six, the relatives, protected by relatives. So actually, she may have relative, right? Right? So therefore, when you look at uh, the way the Pali Canon say or the commentary say, so as a man, if you do not get an approval from the guardians, you, you're breaking uh, sila, you're breaking sila. If you really follow uh, what the Pali Kanan say, what the commentary say. Number seven is the lineage or the clan. So as a Chinese, you have a lineage, right? As a clan. Uh, Mr. Li lineage, like that, right? So, what, what, what else? What else? Uh, Chinese, you have a lot of clan, right? Huh? Sorry. Can you can you say some of some of the example? Chinese, you have a clan, a lot of clan. Huh? Maybe dialect group, maybe yeah. Like a sometime uh, lame, right? Uh, sorry, surname, surname. What the, the example? Mr. Uh, Tam, like, like Mr. Tan, right? Tan lineage, like that. So they are. So, I think you can visualize uh, your ancestor in ancient Singapore, right? So they come from China. They stay here. No relatives. No parents but they are protected by their clan. Singapore, we have a lot of uh, association, right? Clan association, you have clan association. So you don't have any relatives in Singapore by that time, no parents, you came here alone, but you are protected by your clan. So, so there's no way, right? <laughs> 
to have a sexual relation with the, with the women. Then uh, the next one is the women uh, protected by the Dhamma brethren. So that means co-relationists. Co-relationists. As a nun, so she was protected by Dhamma brethren, right? Other nuns. So even the nuns, you are not allowed to have a sexual relation. So up to now, we have eight type of women having sex with an unmarried man. So this one is for women, for women. Having sex with a married man is not sexual misconduct for these eight type of unmarried women. The commentary said, because they are owner of their own sex. They are owner of their own sex. So these eight type of women, if they get, uh, if they have a sexual relation, with unmarried men. So they are not breaking this precept. So this is actually it's not fair, right? <laughs> Commentary explanation is not fair. You know? <laughs> because, maybe because of Yan uh, Hanusi, men dominate a society, right? Normally, up to now, even right now, men dominate a society. So normally, men, uh, normally, maybe generally, uh, they commit sexual misconduct. I don't know whether it's truth. Do you think it is truth? Mostly, men, right? They are the one who start, right? This type of uh, practice. Maybe because of that, the commentators, actually, um, even though the Buddha say, you know, he commit sexual relations, sometimes, actually, the Buddha may refer the women, right? Maybe it should be the same, you know? It should be the same. As a woman, as a, as a woman, you are not allowed to have a sexual relation with the man who is protected by his father, his mother, right? It should be the same, right? It should be the same. Not fair, right? <laughs> the commentary, they say, right? As a woman, if you have sexual relationship with a married man, it's not sexual misconduct. You are allowed to do that. You are allowed to do that. Maybe the commentator, they favor women. <laughs> right? I think it's clear, right? It's clear. So up to now, we have talked about eight type of women, unmarried women. So if they, get, if they have a sexual relation with the unmarried man, they are not breaking this precept. The number nine, women under engagement, even before their birth. Saraka in Bali is a, according to Indian tradition, uh, there may be agreement between two parents. So if you get a daughter, uh, we will allow them to get, uh, my son will get married with your daughter like that, right? If there is engagement like that, then um, man is not allowed to have a sexual relation. Another simply it is engagement, right? Engagement. The n number, uh, number 10 is Women whose violation entails a penalty, penalty. Someone lay down when you're mostly officials. So they lay down when you're, uh, they, they, they lay down the law, rules and regulations. Especially at the time of, I want to say, the king, you know. Normally the king, they 
choose a laurel woman, you know, as his uh, consort. So if someone have a sexual relation with such a woman, then he was a very heavy penalty, you know, punishment, punishment. So if a man has sexual relation with such a woman, whose violation entails a penalty or punishment, then it is also a kind of sexual misconduct. So here, we talk about 10 type of women, unmarried women. They are not married yet. So as a man, if you have a sexual relation with any of these 10, you are breaking this precept. So as a woman, as a woman, uh, other than number nine and number 10, uh, the other eight, you know, the other eight women, unmarried, unmarried women, so they can have a sexual relation with the unmarried men. It's not breaking sila, breaking sila. <clears throat> okay, any question? Do you, uh, is, it, is it clear? Okay. Okay. A question here? Can you use can you use uh, other microphone because this one is not working. Okay, thank you. Uh, referring to the four factors of uh, sexual misconduct, one of them is effort, mm. which I find is redundant because for any action, be it wholesome or unwholesome, to take fruit, you need effort, isn't it? We are talking about bodily effort. Uh, if you have uh, motivation just in your mind, it is not Kamisu Mecha Char. So this one is bodily effect. Okay, yeah. thank you, Bante. Yeah, someone may have uh, motivation to break this precept, but he didn't materialize or he didn't make any effect. It is not a Kamisu Mecha Char yet. Okay. Pante, I'm still uh, confused with the, uh, the commentators just now. Because if as per Pali Canon, it is stated like that based on the, I mean, not Pali Canon, based on the commentators. But in a society like us, I mean, what is the, actually the, the guideline from, I mean, from the, for the Buddhist society? I mean, if it is not made clear, I think it can really create a confusion or something very bad <laughs> happening in the society. Say, if we say that there are married uh, women, if uh, having a sexual relationship with an unmarried man, and it is not uh, breaking the seal, breaking the third precepts. I think when you look at what the Buddha said, in the Chona Soda, in Chona Soda, it's quite clear that before you get married, it is better not to have a sexual relation, sexual intercourse. According to, I think, it seemed to me that uh, it is better not to have any type of sexual uh, activities with your girlfriend or with your boyfriend, according to this. But of course, it is not in accordance with the current, uh, current uh, way of thinking, current way of thinking. Um, as a woman, one way or another, she will be protected by 
mother, father, relative, right? One way or another. One way or another. So when you look at, when you take it literally, literally, so that me, uh, it is better not to have a sexual relationship with any type of women. Only you get married. And that will be clear guideline, clear guideline. But when you look at the commentary explanation, it favor the women because uh, a type of woman, a married woman, they can have a, if they have, not they can, I mean, if they have a sexual relation with the uh, a married man, because in the society, even today, uh, even today, uh, man dominated, right? Man dominated society. Normally, women are passive, passive. Suppose if someone, uh, a married man, come in, have a sexual relation with them, if they are unmarried, if they are not married, then they are not breaking precept, but according to commentary. But I think if we look at the um, Pali Canon, it should be the same, you know. Uh, how to say, how to say, uh, the men also protected by their parents, right? Their relative should be the same. The commentary trying to interpret in other way. So you, you, you that, that, that you. I mean, what I mean is, it's quite clear, it's quite clear me, as a man or women, I think, both, you know. Um, don't look at, you know, based on current standard, you know. It is a, uh, if you look at based on current standard, I think it may not be in, in line with. But here, if you look at uh, the Pali Canon, if, if we read between the lines, so that me, uh, man or women, uh, you, you should have a sexual relationship only after you get married. Or maybe only after you engage. Only after you engage. With, because engagement me, uh, the parents of the woman allow, right? Uh, so that, that, that this may not be, how to say, uh, sexual, miscon uh, mis sexual miscontact. Okay, uh, question. Uh, evening, Mandy. My question is about Kametsu Michachara. Um, just now you mentioned a little bit. Uh, so if Kametsu is all the sensual desires, why this is only mean for the sexual misconduct because the sensual desires includes everything. You're right, you're right. Uh, in this case, uh, gamesu or sensual pleasure refer to uh, sexuality or sexuality or uh, engaging in sexual, sexual relation. But uh, here also, earlier I showed the, the definition of commentary. So if you don't take, if you don't want to take commentary explanation, it's okay. So according to uh, Pali Canon, according to Sotas, Kamesu Mechachara Mi, you are practicing uh, uh, sexual relation in a wrong way, in a wrong way. Maybe it, it solely refer to uh, sexual miscontact. Okay, e even so, if you want to translate literally, it, it means all kinds of the Maybe, sense yeah. design. Because oh. the commentary trying to interpret in such a way. Okay. Because about um, drinking alcohol, mm. right? Mm. Drinking alcohol, you are misusing, you are uh, practicing, you are you, 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 you are tan in the wrong way, you know? Mm. Wrong way by drinking. So later I, think, later, I think it will be clear. I will show when we are talking about 
drinking alcohol. Okay, thank you. Because Bandai. in Tan Tai Po, and Ho San, I think drinking alcohol is not mentioned here. So therefore, the commentary mentioned that commentary mentioned that uh, drinking alcohol can be added into Kami Sume Cha Cha. He gave the reason why, he gave the definition, right? Uh, practicing in a wrong way in sensual pleasures. Sensual pleasures. Okay, question. Ah, uh, here. Good evening, Bhante. What about uh, homosexual and lesbian? Is there any sexual misconduct also? I will explain it in late today, maybe. Today. I will explain. Okay, then, um, so these are 10 type of women, no? And married women. So we have a, uh, another 10 type of wife or married woman. So this one also mentioned in Parajika Pali. Parajika Pali. So based on Parajika Pali, Vinaya Pritika, the commentary defined, you know, as a ten type of wife. Number one, wife bought with the money. So suppose somebody bought a wife with the money by giving the money. See, uh, nowadays, Quite often, especially in China, right? China. The girls from neighboring countries, so they are uh, human trafficking, right? Human trafficking. So they bought those, lead, uh, those women with the money. So as a man, if you have a sexual relation with such a one, with such a wife, so you are uh, committing sexual, uh, sexual misconduct. Number two, wife who came and stay at all through her free will. So uh, not get consent from her parents. So nowadays we can call it cohabitation or living together, right? Living together. So according to, uh, according to, um, so does uh, living together also can be breaking the precept, break, breaking the precept. But here, suppose somebody, uh, somebody is uh, living together with uh, one lady, that a man trying to live, trying to have a sexual relation with her. It is it also breaking precept, breaking precept even though she is not a wife. But of course, according to this, consider as a wife, consider as a wife. <clears throat> Another one is a wife who came and stayed because of wealth. So the, uh, the woman is very poor, so she will get sent money because of that, uh, she stay with one guy. So if, as a man, uh, if you have a sexual relation with such a, such, a, such a woman, married woman, consider as a married woman, then uh, breaking this precept. Then number four, wife taken by someone giving clothes. So this one also being poor, it's very cheap. Eh? So the man just giving the clothes and she can, uh, he can have a uh, sexual activities with, with, with that woman. So here, so as a man, if you have a sexual relation with any of these 10 type of married woman, then it is a breaking precept. Number five, wife married by pouring water, pouring water. So actually, this is a kind of traditional merit, a kind of traditional merit. Uh, stay practicing in Myanmar, 
No, I'm not quite sure in India. I think in India also still practicing. So in Myanmar, wedding ceremony, the main, uh, the main part of wedding ceremony is uh, man and uh, how to say the the bride and bridegroom. So they have to uh, they have to hold their hand each other. Then one of the passing way pour the water on their hand. It became official merit. <laughs> Is it the way, you know, uh, how to say the tradition, the custom of custom of merit. Custom of merit. Maybe this come from India. This come to India. By pouring water on the hands of both bride and bridegroom at the wedding ceremony. Then uh, another one is wife married by taking off the pet for the body she carry on the head. I think nowadays in the West, right? In the West, in all about the can, all about the world, you know, people follow uh, the uh, the bright the bright groom, right? The bright groom wear the fee, right? Kind of fee. Then when uh, they have to unveil the veil, right? Maybe a kind of this, this custom. The number seven is the slave wife. Is there any slave system in the world? Maybe some part, right? Stay pride is in. Uh, Slave as, as well as a wife. Then the servant white, uh, a servant or a staff as well as a wife. It doesn't mean, it's not a, I want to say, official wife, but uh, the lady uh, is working, supporting company. And also the boss have a consider as a wife or have a sexual relation. The servant as well as wife. And then captive wife, somebody who obtained from the better fee. And also, so the last one, the temporary wife. Temporary wife. Nowadays, nowadays, right? It's quite so there are some service. Um, so the women were, uh, were still with you as a wife, right? As a wife. Even now, even nowadays. Here, prostitutes are included in this group. Support you hire a prostitute for one night. So she is considered as a wife, your wife, for that night. Another guy trying to have a sexual relation with that prostitute, then breaking precept, breaking precept. Because th that prostitute is a wife of an earlier guy who hire, right? Who hire. Maybe I think that it is uh, the, the Pali canon just, just show the, some of the example, right? Some of the example. Any type of wife, you are not allowed to have a sexual relation. If you do so, you're breaking precept, breaking precept. So there may be some other type, but the Pali Ganan just mentioned and as an example. But the commentators try to take it as a ten type of wife, ten type of wife. So that me, as a man, one must avoid having sex with both ten type of unmarried woman and ten type of married wife, married women or wife. As a man. So you have to refrain from having such a relation with any of them, any of them. So if you do so, you're breaking precept. How about according to commentaries? Prayer women, so that me, the last two type of 
and married woman. So they are number one, if she is under engagement, if she is engaged, she is not allowed to have a sexual relation with another gay, not another boy, another man, another man. And somebody laid down uh, rules and regulation that if a man have a sexual relation with such a lady, entail penalty, right? Punishment. So we have a two, uh, the last two type of a married woman, and also ten type of wife. So they are not allowed to have a sexual relationship with any man, with any man. Eight type of woman, so they are not married, right? Not married. So they can have, according to commentaries, they can have a sexual relation with a married man, a married man. So for that, I think uh, we have to study according to the sotas, according to commentaries, right? To interpretation. Normally, the Buddha normally use the word he, you know, in the soda quite often. But it doesn't refer to only men, you know? It refers to anyone, anyone. So when we are talking about sexual misconduct, then I think that uh, men and women, no different. Even though the Buddha used the word he, right? he, it also referred to she, you know? If a woman have a sexual relation with the man who is protected by his father, mother, parents, who is protected by their relative, right? Breaking precept, breaking precept. That's my, my point of view, my point of view. The commentary interpret the other way, the other way, right? So by using 20 type of married and a married woman. So the eight type of a married woman can have a sexual relation with a married man, a married man. And 12 women not allowed to have a sexual relation with any type of man, you know, married or unmarried. But as a man, quite, se quite serious, you know. So you cannot have a sexual relation with any or 20 type of woman. Okay, any question? Because I hope it's clear. Okay, here, the question. Here. Bante, what about widows? Oh, widows. Maybe she also protected her, right? <laughs> She also protected by her relatives, at least, right? At least, or brother or sisters. So that means if you want to have such a relation with the widow, then you need to uh, marry it, or maybe engage, at least. Engage. So then only you have a, uh, the right to have a such a relation. Mm. Any question? Uh, good evening, Bante. Can I ask what is the criteria for protected? So the what is the criteria when you all say uh, when the Buddha say protected by parents or? Mm. Uh, brother, sister. Criteria of protection. So that it is not mentioned here, right? So the Buddha just mentioned protected by parents or mother or father. Maybe uh, as, a, as a man, if you still have your mother, your mother is protected by you. Sorry, your mother is, uh, your mother protects you like that. So I think uh, no criteria is made 
no criteria is mentioned in the Pali Canon and also in the commentary. Just maybe stay with her or maybe trying to... Of course, if you look at current situation, right? If you are, if you are 80, about 80, you are free to choose, right? You are free to do. So I think if you want to follow current situation, it's also all right, right? But even in, even in current laws, you are not allowed to have a sexual relation with under age care, right? Under age care. But of course, if you look at the soda, it's uh, very clear, I think. For me, it's very clear. As long as you are not engaged with the gay, or as long as you do not get married with the gay, not allowed to have a, uh, shouldn't have a sexual relation. Okay, so uh, to talk about the result of sexual, rela uh, sexual misconduct, uh, we we'll use one soda, uh, similar soda. The Buddha said that sexual misconduct repeatedly pursued, developed, cultivated, is conducive to one of the four awful planes, one of the four awful planes. For one reborn as a human being, sexual misconduct at minimum conduce to enmity and rivalry, enmity and rivalry. I think no need to explain, right? If you are engaging in sexual misconduct, you have a lot of MMT, right? A lot of rivalry. <laughs> the opposite of sexual misconduct is faithful to your life partner, you know? Faithful to your life partner or your family. So here in the Sota is just mentioned abstaining from sexual misconduct. Having abandoned sexual misconduct, he abstained from sexual misconduct. He does not have sexual relation with the women who are protected by their mother, father, mother and father, etc. So this is a abstinence from sexual misconduct. So this one also I think no need to explain. Then I want to quote uh, one soda that talk about faithful, you know, uh, faithful to like partner. It's very beautiful sort of from, uh, very beautiful story from Pali Canon. But Tama, Sama Jiwi Soda, Sama Jiwi Soda. So Sama Jiwi can be translated as say, the same in living, the same in living. Nakula Pita. So the father of Nakuta. Nakula, sorry. The father of Nakula. And Nakula Mata. The mother of Nakula. Maybe I think Nakula is their son. Their son. So they are known as the father and mother of Nakula. So they are quite popular in Buddhist literatures. Buddhist literatures. So they are faithful to each other. So they also left the Buddha as their son, you know. As soon as they saw the Buddha, they welcomed him, warmly welcomed him as their own son. Come, son, my son, come and visit, come and sit on my, my house like that. So very, um, very close to the Buddha. According to commentaries, uh, so they, uh, they are the parents of Bodhisattva for 500 years in their previous life. So because of that, uh, at the time of the Buddha, they, uh, they have that affection from Sansara. So for that reason, as soon as they saw the Buddha, they, they, tell, they call him as my son. 
come to your house, come to your house, you know. So they say. So they are very close to the Buddha. So one time, when the Buddha visit their, their town, uh, Nakula Peter said to the Blessed One, Bandi, since I was young, when the younger Nakula Mata, you know, Mata is the mother, right? Pita is the father. The younger Nakula Mata was given to me in marriage. I do not recall ever trans transgressing against her, even in thought, much less by deed. So they are very, very faithful too. We wish Bandi to see one another, not only in this present life, but also in future life. <laughs> so they, they love each other, eh? they love each other. The housewife, Nanda, Ma, sorry, Nakula Mada, in return said to the Blessed One, same thing, you know, same thing. So since she go to Nakula Peter house, she never transgress her, her husband. So they love each other. So they want to see one another in this present life as well as next life. So they want to see next life as well. And the Buddha said that, how should us? If both husband and wife wish to see one another, not only in this present life, but also in future lives, they should have four things. They should have four things. Every, normally when we are invited at the wedding, wedding ceremony, we normally give this summon. <laughs> because they just got married, you know. They want to see each other, you know. Not only in this life, but also next life. Maybe after a few years, that desire faded away. <laughs> I had one, one of my, uh, my devotees, uh, uh, after getting married about 50 years, you know. Maybe about 50 years. The husband say, don't try to make a wish to meet next life. <laughs> just go to heaven or just to try to attain Nibbana. <laughs> Maybe no more wish. <laughs> no more wish to see each other, you know. Quite, quite. So here, so they are very old, you know. Uh, they want to see each other. Even, you know. Everywhere, right? Some cafes, husband and wife, they want to see each other. And also they want to meet uh, next life as well. So yeah, the Buddha said that if you want to see in this life as well as in next life each other, then you should have four qualities. Number one, the same faith. Samasata. You must have the same faith. Faith, according to Pali Kana, is faith in the enlightenment of the Buddha. In other words, faith in the triple gym. If we interpret in such a way, may not be good, right? May not be good. Maybe I'm trying to see the commentary explanation not mentioned. Maybe faith, me, uh, maybe not only faith, it doesn't, it may not be, you know, faith in the triple gym. It can be the same faith, you know, in certain things, right? S certain things, just like a um, uh, faith in the science, uh, like that. Faith in love, like that, maybe, right? The number two, the same virtual behavior, sila, morality, morality. That's number two is very important, right? If uh, a husband, a man is breaking sila 
or maybe having such a uh, misconduct, having such a misconduct, then they cannot, they don't want to see each other, right? They will not be able to see each other. So you must have the same sila. So here, sila me is sila me controlling your bodily behavior and verbal behavior. That's sila. As a man and women, uh, as a husband and wife, you need to control your body, your, your mouth, right? Suppose the wife always complaining, you know, remembering, like that. then the husband may not be happy, right? May not want to see. So therefore, it is important to have the same virtuous behavior. Number three, the same generosity. If one of them is uh, greedy and also um, not generous, stingy, right? If someone is, one of them is stingy, then maybe uh, one person want to donate and the, the other person trying to deter, you know? Then in the long run, may not be good, may not be good. Generosity, chagami, uh, how to say, Generosity here me uh, offering, you know, sharing what you have, sharing what you have. Then about for it the same wisdom, the same wisdom, you know, the the, the level of understanding. If uh, the wisdom or understanding is very low, then may not get along with, right? So for that reason, I think uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew encourage Singaporean to get married the same level, right? The same level, that's the reason why, you know? The same wisdom, the same wisdom, must have the same wisdom. So if the husband is very wise and the lady is not, then not get along with. If the lady is very wise, the husband is very, I don't want to say, very dark and also no wisdom, then we're not cut along with each other. So the Buddha said that, then they will see one another, not only in this present life, but also in future life, if they have four qualities, right? The same faith, the same morality, the same generosity, the same wisdom. So then if they have an equal, you know, four quality, then they will get along with each other. So, I mentioned this one because, uh, you know, for, how to say, truthful in, the, uh, in your life partner, faithful to your life partner. Beautiful story from Pali Canon. <clears throat> okay, so, here, let's talk about gender uh, gender equality and body. Before we go to homosexuality, so I will talk about this one because later I will talk about, I will discuss about uh, homosexuality um, and also about uh, LGBT, uh, the, the problem about LGBT and also uh, same-sex marriage because nowadays, right, in the West, so many countries, so they allow same-sex uh, same marriage. Even in Thailand, right? Thailand, so they one in uh, the party, uh, one in the election. So they were, they were promote uh, same-sex marriage, human, human right. So we discuss uh, what the, uh, what the Buddhists say about those problems. So before we talk about that, I want to discuss say, there is a gender equality in Buddhism. Gender equality is fully granted in Buddhism if we carefully observe two important facts. Normally, of course, gender equality is not there <laughs> normally. If we look at just uh, surface level, no? surface level. In envy, 
we have only Manx, no Nans, right? So when you look at human right perspective, so there's no human right, right? No human right. So actually, this is a quite natural. So there's no gender equality in Buddhism. But I will discuss based on two important facts. So the first one is uh, under the Buddhist concept of karma. Buddhist concept of karma, everyone is equal regardless of their sexual orientation. Their sexual orientation, whether men or women. So the one who do good things will be higher, you know, higher. That's very important one, very important one. So here, um, gender equality me, uh, regardless of their sexual orientations, whether they are males or females, whether they are heterosexuals or homosexuals or any type, so they have the same equality under the theory of camp, you know, theory of camp. <clears throat> Buddhist temple will not deter anyone to come in. Anyone come in, uh, can come in study, can come in uh, worship, right? So but for theory of karma, the Buddhist concept of karma, I want to quote uh, uh, one of the famous lines from the Pali Canon. The Buddha encourages his disciples to reflect the idea of ownership very often. So in Bena Prachavakita Pasota, so the Buddha said that, the Buddha explained the theory of camp. I am or we are the owner of our, our own camp. We are owner of our own camp. Whether we will be, uh, we will be the heir of whatever camp, good or bad, that we do, that we do. So this is a theory of karma. That's very important, right? Whether male or female, whether layman or monk, no discrimination, right? As a monk, even though I wear the rope, if I do unwholesome things, I will be the owner of my unwholesome karma. So my rope cannot protect my unwholesome karma, right? So similarly, uh, because in, um, I think most of the society, especially Buddhist, Buddhist society, they consider as a women are not clean, eh? not only in Buddhism, but also in, even in the West, some religions, they, they say that women are not clean. But the Buddha never say that. The Buddha never say that. But tradition, Buddhist tradition, Buddhist society, they say that women are not clean. Women are under men, you know? It's not correct, it's not correct. So under the law of karma, everyone is the same. Even laymen and monk, monastics, same, you know, same. No discrimination. Then I will quote one verse from Vasala Sota. It's very beautiful. The Buddha said that one is not an outcast by birth, nor by birth is one a holy man. By action, one becomes an outcast. By action, one becomes a holy man. Buddhism, there is no caste system. So therefore, the Buddha allowed anyone to enter Buddha Sasana. The Buddha will allow anyone to ordain as a monk or to ordain as a nun. So therefore, in Buddhism, uh, Venerable Sariputta, Venerable Maukalana, so they are from Brahmin caste. And Venerable Ananda, and the Buddha him said they are from Katiya, right? Ruling, ruling caste. And also, uh, there are some, uh, like a venerable Upali, right? 
is considered as an outcast, you know? Not an outcast, it's a low, low class, you know, as a Baba. Baba. And Venerable Radha, disciples of Venerable Sariputta, is from low caste, like that. Anyone can be can, a man or nuns. So there's no, uh, the Buddha, according to Buddha, uh, one is not an outcast by birth. The Buddha go against caste system, caste system. So the Buddha will decide according to action, according to your morality, according to your wisdom. You know? It's very beautiful, theory of karma, theory of karma. So, before we talk about um, homosexuality, before we talk about same-sex marriage, I want to highlight these two concepts. Another one is, everyone is potential to attain the enlightenment if they follow the Noble Eightfold Path, if they practice the Noble Eightfold Path. Anyone, man or women, lay passing or monastics. So everyone is potential to attain, to attain enlightenment. So that's very important. So to talk about homosexuality later, maybe today, no time, maybe next, next week we'll talk about in details. So here, everyone, is, uh, everyone has potential to attain the enlightenment. Mahayana used a beautiful term for that, Buddha Bija, Buddha Bija. In English, Buddha seat or Buddha nature. They normally say that all sentient beings possess, have a potential to have a Buddha seat or Buddha nature. They have Buddha nature, right? For that reason, they, they will say you that do not care any sentient beings. They have Buddha seat or Buddha nature. If you are killing any Indian being, you are killing Buddha seed, like that. So that means, uh, it is the same, you know. Tidavara also uh, said that everyone can attain enlightenment. Enlightenment here is Buddha nature, you know. Buddha seed, a potential to, uh, to know the Four Noble Truths. The potential to know the Four Noble Truths. You have a Buddha Bija or Buddha nature. That means you have a potential to attain enlightenment. In other words, to know the Four Noble Truths. If you practice the Noble Eightfold Path. Noble Eightfold Path. So that means whether you are female or male, whether you are lesbians or gays, whether you are. Uh, Bisexual or any any type, you know, sexual orientations. It doesn't matter. You are on all your own karma. If you do good, you have a good a good result. If you practice the noble eightfold path, as a case or as a lesbians, it doesn't matter. You can attain, you know, no no barrier, you know, no barrier, no hindrances to attain enlightenment. So because of that, two important facts, two important facts. I want to mention two, two things to talk about enlightenment. Then Ichra Soda from Sauta Nikaya, the Buddha said, very beautiful, very beautiful. The Buddha said that one who has such a vehicle, vehicle, whether a woman, a woman or a man has by means of this vehicle, grown close to, grown close to Nibbana, uh, Nibbana. Here, Yana, actually vehicle me Yana. Here, vehicle me Yana, which means the Noble Evil Path. The Noble Evil Path is the vehicle to go to Nibbana. So here, we have Mahayana, greater vehicle. And we have a, 
ฮีนายาน่ะลาซาเฟียเกน Actually there's only one fear care no greater or no lesser actually fear care refer to the noble four path mahayana also the land the noble four path no other path theravada also land the noble four path no other path so the noble four path me yana no greater yana or no lesser yana So this is a history, you know. This is a history. So, um, Buddhism have a, a lot of schools. Earlier time, when Mahayana, earlier uh, schools of Mahayana, they used their schools as a Mahayana greater v i a k a and the other one, Hinayana lesser v i a k a you know, lesser v i a k a No such things. Only one yarn. One yarn. So therefore, we can use the word dharma yana, the dharma yana. No greater or lesser. Even now, I think some of the Mahayana, 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 they trying to call Theravada as a Hinayana. They still call it Hinayana. It's not truth. It's the one way of uh, humiliating or b i l i t a r i n g b i l i t a r i n g There's only one enlightenment, you know. There's only one, the taste of enlightenment. If you practice the noble e i g h t f o l path, that is called yana. So that will lead to, uh, by means of that yana, you can go to nibbana. That yana is nothing but the noble e i g h t f o l path. When you go and study uh, Mahayana sutras, same. When you study t i r a v a d a teachings, same. The n o b e f o r path. When I start to, before I teach uh, the the, no, uh, the four noble truths, I used to listen um, uh, some of the lessons taught by Mahayana Mank, Mahayana Mank, who uh, was living in uh, U.S. So he used Theravada sources to explain four noble truths. So that me same, you know. Whether you use Mahayana materials or Theravada materials, so the Yana or the Vyaka will be the same, the Noble e i g h t f o l Path. Only by using that Vyaka, the Noble e i g h t f o l Path, you will t a k e Nibbana. You will go to Nibbana. So here in this uh, s o t a s the Buddha said that. One who has such a vehicle, so that me, the noble e i g h t f o l path, whether a woman or a man, by means of this vehicle, by means of by means of the noble e i g h t f o l path, uh, drawn close to nibbana, that you are closer to nibbana. If you practice the noble e i g h t f o l path, the more you practice, the more you are closer to nibbana. Right. So. Uh, to talk about nibbana, I will use a uh, separate topic. Separate topic so, uh, about nibbana, then I will explain. So here, v i k a m i yana, v i k a m i the noble e i g h t f o l path. Whether you are male or female, whether you are l a y m a n or monastics, it doesn't matter. As long as you practice the noble e i g h t f o l path, you are closer to nibbana. So you will go to n e p a l You will attain n e p a l right? You will attain the bliss of n e p a l Then another one, g o t a m i Soda from i n g o t r a n i k a y a i n g o t r a n i k a y a g o t a m i is stepmother of the Buddha. You all know that, right? So his mother, uh, Mahamaya, passes away after seven days. You know, uh, giving birth, body s a t f a So g o t a m i uh, take care of, took care of the Buddha, uh, body s e t t e r Prince s e t t e r They're very helpful. Then when uh, Prince s e t t e r became the Buddha, then uh, he visited uh, Kapila v a t u his hometown. And he met with g o t a m i g o t a m i offered uh, the rope 
the rope. And the Buddha tells her to offer the rope to the Sangha, not to him. We have studied, right? Takina Vipanga Soda from uh, Majamani Kai. <clears throat> so right now, Gautami wants to become a Buddhist nun. So she requested the Buddha, Bande, I want to become a Buddhist nun, but Kuni, under you are Sasana. The Buddha rejected three times. The Buddha rejected three times. Because of that, so there are some uh, argument that the Buddha is not willing to accept women in his, uh, in his uh, you know, uh, sasana. sasana. The, here, the commentary said that the Buddha rejected. The reason is to let God me know the value of Buddhist teaching, you know, right? If you are rejected in a company, suppose, three times, you know, right? Then luckily, you try the fourth time. You get that job. You will take a lot of value, right? Similarly, commentary is plain. <laughs> Whether you believe or you don't believe, it doesn't matter, right? So them dying, you know. So for that reason, uh, the commentaries are very helpful to know teachings of the Buddha, you know, teachings of the Buddha. But sometimes, you know, also they make mistakes. You know? Here, uh, God me want to become Nibekuni. She requested the Buddha reject three times, you know. Then God me taught to Venerable Ananda. She is willing to be, you know, Bhikkhuni, uh, Buddhist nun. Then Venerable Ananda taught to the Buddha. The Buddha, God me is very helpful for you. When your mother passes away, she brought up, she take care of you. She, she loves you so much. And now she wants to become a nun. You should allow her to be a Buddhist nun. The Buddha rejected again. The Buddha rejected again. Then, Venerable Ananda said this one. Then the Venerable Ananda said to the Blessed One, Bandi, if a woman were to go, to go forth, from the household life into homelessness, homelessness in the Dharma and discipline. So here, Dharma and discipline in Buddhism, Buddha Sasana, proclaimed by the Buddha, <clears throat> proclaimed by the Tathagata. So that means if a woman were to go forth to ordain as a nun, you know, in Buddha Sasana, Will it be possible for her to realize the fruit of stream in tree, Sotapati Maga? Sorry, Sotapati Phala. The fruit of one's returning, Sakatagami. The fruit of non returning, Anagami. And the fruit of arranship, Arahata. Is it possible to realize? So the petty uh, fella, Sakadagami and Nagami, Rata fella. The Buddha said, It will be, it will be Ananda. Yes, possible, it's possible. Because of this, the Buddha allowed Bhikkhuni order. Venerable Ananda said that, Bandi. Gautami, Mahapachapati Gautami is very helpful for you. She take care of you when you are young. And also, uh, she is sort of bana. You should accept Gautami as a bhikkhuni. The Buddha rejected. But here, Venerable Ananda is very clever. If a woman became 
uh, ordained under the Buddha as a nun, she can become a Sotapanna, Sakadagami, and Nagami Arahan. The Buddha said, Yes, yes. If so, Bandi, you should allow. <laughs> God me as a, as a nun. Because of that, the Buddha allowed Bhikkhuni order. Bhikkhuni order. Because of that, Bhikkhunis are very grateful to Venerable Ananda. So for that, uh, they make a statue of Venerable Ananda in their nunnery. You know? It is recorded, in, uh, recorded by one of the Chinese travelers. Chinese monk, and then uh, Xuan Chen or I, Xuan Chen, yeah? Xuan Chen, right? Xuan Chen or Fa I don't know. So they recorded that um, even that time, they see the statue of Venerable Ananda in the nunnery. Because of Venerable Ananda, so they, they got a chance to ordain as a Bhikkhuni order. So here, my point here is, whether we men or men, whether lay passing or monastics, whether lascivious or case, it doesn't matter. If you practice the Noble Eightfold Path, you can take enlightenment. So that, for that reason, based on two facts, under the law of karma, even the lascivious and case, if they do good deed, so they will have so the result of that good deed. If they pride the noble four path, they can be can an arahan, even an arahan. No how to say uh, discriminations in Buddhism. So for that, before we talk about homosexuality, and we need to know two two things, eh? Theory of gamma and theory of enlightenment. So then you will have a better understanding to know Buddhist uh, perspective on LGBT. Then you would, if you do not know that, then you, you, you will not understand that, right? Even nowadays, even nowadays, both Tedavara and Mahayana, most of the monks, they go against, you know, they go against, they look down on homosexuality. And also, what they say is not in according with the Buddhist teaching. So, we'll study next week. Okay, if you have a question, one question, yeah, if you wish. Okay, here, one question. Bhante, is there uh any age difference uh, possible, the, the maximum age difference between a man and a girl when they get married? Actually, age is not mentioned here. We don't find any age limit. Age limit. So therefore, uh, it look at only the, uh, the protect, uh, guardians, you know, whether they are protected like that. Because sometimes uh, I, I see, let's say, for example, an old man marry a very young girl like that. So is that uh, proper or not? Actually, it's not mentioned in the Pali canon. Marriage is considered as a secular affair. The Buddhism will not interfere such a way, you know? I think after next week, you will understand that. Okay, so uh, let's call it a day. Thank you. Yo wa ka tam pa wa ro ma nu je su sa kya mu ni pa ka wa ka ta ke cho pa ra ka to pa la vi ri ya sa ma ki Tan su ka tan sa ra na tam u pe mi 
ราคาวิราคามะนิจจามะสอกันตัมมะมะสังกัตตามะปฏิกูลัน Madura mi mampa kunan suwi patan Dhamma mi mansara natamu pemi Yatta chadena mahapalamahu Chattu su su si su puri sa yu ge su Atta cha po ga la dhamma da sa te Sangha mi man sa ra na tha mu pe mi Sattu, sattu, sattu